in the headlines. Abdullahi Adamu Kiari resigned from Senate to focus on APC job. Because of the state government says local council polls ended hitch free. Mass burial holds for over 100 victims of plateau attacks as government vows to crack down on perpetrators of the dastardly act. And on the foreign scene, dozens killed, thousands displaced in Philippines landslide as floods and tropical storm Meji hits. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Ibrahim Yusuf. <music> Now the news in full. Senator Abdullahi Adamu has resigned as the senator representing Nasara West in the 9th Senate. Senator Wakar Kiari has also relinquished his position as lawmaker representing Barno North. This followed their emergence as executives of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC. While Adamu was elected chairman of the party, Kiari was elected deputy national chairman North. And the House of Representatives has passed a bill to establish a trust fund for the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC. The bill, titled A Bill for an Act to Establish National Youth Service Corps Trust Fund for the purpose of providing a sustainable source of funds for the National Youth Service Corps, skill acquisition, training and empowerment of Corps members, training and retraining of the personnel of the National Youth Service Corps, development of camps and NYC formations and facilities therein, and for related matters. The bill passed through third reading after a motion by the House leader, al Hazan Adu Dogwa, and seconded by the House Chief Whip, Muhammad Tahir Mungunu, at plenary on Tuesday. The bill was passed after a voice vote put by the Deputy Speaker, Ahmed Idris Wasi, who presided over the plenary. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has lamented that only 57% of Nigerian children under five years were registered by the National Population Commission. The House adopted and passed a motion moved by Bashiru Daudu at plenary on Tuesday. Presenting the motion, he said lack of proper birth and death registration is making it difficult for government to plan adequately for their medical, nutritional and other needs. He added that the federal government needs to know the number of health centers needed in the country, as well as the population growth in the country to correctly estimate the medications to be imported and the tariffs. Dawoodu said no country can progress without credible birth statistics, adding that registration of birth is the most basic requirement in planning for children. Meanwhile, the Kazan state government says it has conducted local government elections and was completely hitch free. The Secretary to the State Government, Dr. Mustafa Inwa, commended the State Independent Electoral Commission for the success of the exercise. However, there was a delay in the commencement of the election in some polling units, and the State Government accused the opposition of trying to sabotage the election. Jamil Mabe has details. <laughs> The Secretary to the Katsina State Government, Dr. Mustafa Inua, commended the State Independent Electoral Commission for a successful election exercise. That election materials and personnel were discharged early enough to reach to the destinations designed for, to, 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 to hold this election. Seven years of court case has denied the people of Kazina State representation at local government levels. Today, the long-awaited moment is unfolding. And the people once again lined up to vote in the local government chairmanship and councillorship election. With over 3 million registered voters expected to participate, the election will produce a total of 34 local government chairmen and 361 councillors. However, in some polling units, election materials were delayed and voters lamented. And uh, here where I am, uh, Modoji Primary School, is my polling unit. I've been uh, casting my vote in this uh, polling unit for the past, um, I think, since from 1999 to date. Even though it's first in time, 
it's not enough reason to say that people will not come out basically if you can see the place i've been in this place since i'm a uh, quarter after seven but i didn't see anybody with uh, my, anything to do with uh, my materials of the elections or anything like that dr mustafa you know accused the opposition of causing mayhem to sabotage the election what actually brought the delay well like i said in Hausa, the pdp organized thugs in most of these places to ensure that election material from the local government headquarters to work do not reach this world in time. We had to work with the security agencies to ensure that they were able to disperse this uh, uh, thugs uh, uh, brought into to, to this local government uh, office to, to ensure that election material and personnel uh, move to the various uh, polling units and so on. That's what actually caused the delay. Osman Nadada who casted his vote, hit free, commended officials for adequate preparation in Wakil and Kudu too. Frankly speaking, as you have seen, they have done quite uh, a lot. There was no delay and almost all the voting materials and the officers are on ground as early as uh, 8 30. I've been here since 7 o'clock and almost all the materials with the other officials are on ground. So the preparations are it's quite commendable. Trust TV observed massive turnout in some polling units within Kazina Metropoli. However, in the suburban areas, there were low turnout of voters in the area. Jamila Mabai, Trust TV News, Kazina. And families of abducted victims of the Abuja Kaduna train attack have called on the federal government to open dialogue with the terrorist group that abducted their loved ones. This, the families believe, will ensure the safe return of the loved ones. Fatima Saliladan has more. Representatives of the families say they have been in trying times since the abduction of their loved ones. They want the federal government to not only hear their plight, but to take concrete steps to address it. From the videos that have, been, that have gone viral, they insist that yes, government knows what they want. Because we, in any ground that you go, you expected that, yes, you'll be expecting call for ransom. But since it's not coming two weeks after today, then we are praying and we believe that government can be able to come in and come to our rescue. Uh, but the hope now is that from what we saw in the video, they are seeing very categorically that their interest is to discuss with government. So we are here to appeal to government to open discussions with them. Uh, they can reach compromises. She called or they let her call just once to say that she is okay, but definitely she is with them. And since then we have not heard anything. They allege that the government has left them on their own without any vital information or communication and called for a dialogue between the federal government and the terrorists to be initiated as part of efforts towards securing the release of their family members. What is the state, what is the condition of their staying there? Nothing of comfort. They are sleeping in the bush, on the bare grounds. Their lives are being endangered to things that you can never imagine. Even the United States of America sometimes do enter negotiations, do enter discussions with, with uh, terror groups, you know, to, to, to protect the interests of, their, of, their, of our citizens. So it is not out of place if government discusses with them. We don't know what they want, but when government discusses with them, they will know. They will f fulfill the ones they can fulfill. You know, it's, it's a compromise. It doesn't mean that whatever they ask government, government must do. But let them start talking with them. We expected that the government would uh, come, communicate or contact the families to let us know, at least allay our fears that something is being done about uh, this happening or this incident. But nothing has been heard. So we don't know anything. Nobody contacted us. It's just silence. We don't know what is happening. And it's clearly, uh, it seems clear that uh, these abductors have the grudge with the government. It's not between them and us. We are ready to do anything. 
within our powers whatever it takes to secure and bring back our family members. It is exactly two weeks since the attack on the Abuja Kaduna train that left some dead, others injured and scores abducted. Families of those abducted continue to hope against hope that their loved ones will come back alive. Fatima Salaladen, Trust TV News, Kaduna. And the mass burial was held on Monday for victims of the Sunday morning attacks by bandits on four villages in Plateau State. Reports say the bandits set over 100 houses ablaze and destroyed the telecom masts to make it difficult for people to call for help. Police, Plateau State Police Public Relations Officer PPRO ASP Uba Gabriel said more policemen had been drafted in the area but did not give the casualty figures. Meanwhile, Governor Simon Lalong, in a statement by his Director of Press and Public Affairs, Makut Simon, vowed to make it difficult for terrorists and other criminals to set their bases in any part of the state. He directed security forces in the state to go after the perpetrators of the dastardly act. He also directed the State Emergency Management Agency and the Peace Building Agency to immediately visit the areas, assess the situation and provide relief as well as trauma management to the people. An investigative team on the attempted jailbreak on Monday at the Port Harcourt Correctional Centre has arrived Port Harcourt from Abuja. According to reports, a fight broke out between two inmates at the Correctional Centre located at the old Port Harcourt Township. Some inmates capitalised on the fight between the two inmates to scale the fence, but were repelled with several gunshots from the vigilant security operatives stationed outside the centre, where one person died and several inmates sustained bullet wounds. The Patakot Correctional Centre Public Relations Officer Juliet Ofwani told our reporter that an investigative team had arrived for Tarkat from Abuja to investigate the circumstances surrounding the matter. She said that the centre will issue a statement on the matter after the investigation. You are watching Trust TV News Update. Coming up after the break... Unlimited opportunities in modern waste reduction through recycling. This and more after the break. Do stay with us. Every patriotic Nigerian should hear this. Any politician who means well for the people will never allow themselves or their supporters to engage in any vile and destructive activities. No politician who truly wants to serve the people and develop the nation will encourage his followers to destroy properties or take human lives before, during or after the elections. The Nigerian public must watch out for these traits and isolate any politician who encourages supporters to engage in violence. No genuine politician or patriot will cause trouble and seek to destroy the very society which they aspire to lead or develop. Politicians who have the good of the people at heart will not allow themselves or their followers to engage in violence, destruction of properties, and then taking of lives. Be vigilant. By their words, you shall know them. Shun violence. Stay away from politicians who want you to do so. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. No. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Trust TV News Update. Now we'll look at our top stories. Abdullahi Adamu Kari resigned from Senate to focus on APC job. And we also told you that Katsina State Government says local council polls ended hitch-free. 
And now moving on to other stories, the ongoing market construction, which has well, announced and flagged off during the administration of the former governor of Anambra State, Chief Willie Obiano, has been stopped by the Oka Capital Territory Development Authority. The team, led by the managing director and chief executive officer of the authority, Amechi Okwosa, said the action became necessary due to the fact that the market was not properly planned during the Obiano administration. He appealed to residents of the Oka Capital Territory to always abide by the rules and regulations as illegal occupation of government lands will not be tolerated. We've been going there for the past 16 months, a year and um, four months. 16 months. Between a year and four months and a year and, 18, and, and, and eight months. We've marked the place. But they refuse to come to formalize their documents. We are not even sure of what they are building. When you disobey the rules and regulations, we enforce it, irrespective of who is involved. So government may have been involved you know, by giving them the permission to start the building, not putting the structures. Recycling is today a key component of modern waste reduction and a source of wealth creation. The socio-economic opportunities in the sector are believed to be limitless, especially when handled properly. In this report, Abu Bakr Abdullahi visits a local factory in Sabon Garden Shabu in Lafia and files in this report. Several waste products of factories or waste products in communities which were considered hazardous are now sources of creating wealth in the modern society. Many local factories of recycling are now springing up creating opportunities for many. Shabon Garin Shabu, in the outskirts of Lafia National State, where some of these local factories are housed, are busy recycling waste rubber to something useful for onward purchase by bigger companies across the country. This is a form of waste management, as well as an avenue for creating jobs for many locals. We are going to put it in our department of our people that most of them they are scrap dealers but when we talk to them we are giving them some time advance they will buy the rubber and keep for us when we cut it we are carrying and measure it by ton or by kilo to bring it to our side when we brought it to our side and we are just we have you will see that we have boys that they are making selection the selection boys are different, the cutting boys are different, and the people that are grinding are different because it's a business that when you put it in your mind, you can do it. And when you move to do it, you progress ever and ever that. Despite its many benefits, the concept is not without challenges. Because we have to get light at any time that we can do it. but in this time we have almost one week now the light is never stable and they are not working and most of it affecting the people that they are granted and when they never grant they can't get something in that. I mean, Lowell, who depend on the business of recycling as his livelihood, said due to high level of unemployment, waste can be wealth when properly managed, especially in developing economies experiencing recession such as Nigeria. He said this trade has changed his life positively. We have nothing to say on this business rather than appreciating God because it is providing clothes, putting food on our table among other benefits. Efficient handling of waste is an important factor in the developmental progress of any nation and the health of the people, so it is paramount, according to Espat, to have a sustainable and efficient management of waste while locals like Aminu make a living. Abu Bakr Abdullahi, Trust TV News, Lafia. The federal government has said billions of mobile telephone lines barred by telecom operators last week will not be unblocked until their owners' national identity numbers, NINs, are linked. This is disclosed in a statement by the Nigeria Communications Commission, NCC, on Tuesday. 
the commission said the link and the accompanying narrative represented patent inf misinformation and disinformation, certainly designed to mislead the public about the SIM cards barred from making calls due to non-linkage with NIN at the set deadline. NCC said the information is necessary in view of the viral web link being circulated on social media and some websites regarding the NIN SIM linkage. The NCC, however, reiterates its commitment to the federal government's directive on the NIN-SIM link to, among others, strengthen security situation in the country, assist in other socio-economic planning activities of the government, as well as to always advance the cause of consumer protection from falling victim to antics of cyber fraudsters. And the federal government has declared Friday, April 15th, and Monday, April 18th, 2022, as public holidays to mark the Easter celebrations. The Minister of Interior, Rauf Aragbeshola, in a statement on Tuesday, urged Christians to emulate the attributes of sacrifice, togetherness, forgiveness, kindness, love, peace, and patience, which were the attributes and practices of Jesus Christ, as exemplified by his ministry on earth. He called on Christians and all Nigerians alike to use the occasion of this year's Easter celebration to pray for an end to the security challenges bedeviling the country. Aregweshola assured Nigerians that the nation is, is on the path to greatness despite the present challenges confronting her. And a look at the foreign scene where at least 25 people have died so far in landslides and floods in the Philippines after tropical sun storm Meji swept the nation. On Tuesday, rescue crews were still battling to retrieve people stranded on the eastern and southern coasts. Meji, known locally as Agaton, hit the archipelago on Sunday with winds of up to 65 kilometers per hour. It was the first such storm of the year in the Philippines, with it seeing an average of 20 each year. More than 13,000 people fled to higher ground shelters as storms lashed the east coast. Heavy rain and winds knocked out power supply, flooded homes and fields and caused mudslides in villages. Philippines is being ranked as one of the most nations most vulnerable to climate disasters due to its geography. And a quick look at sports, where the 2026 Commonwealth Games have been officially awarded to the Australian state of Victoria. It will mark the sixth time the Games have been hosted by Australia. It is the first time a state or region has been awarded the multi-sport event. The 2026 Commonwealth Games will be staged across several cities, including Melbourne, which hosted the 20, 2016 six Games. 16 sports have been confirmed on the initial program, with up to seven more set to be added. Australia's Gold Coast hosted the last edition of the Games in 2018. The 2022 Commonwealth Games will take place in Birmingham from 28 July to 8 August this year. And that wraps it up on Trust TV News Update for this hour. Don't forget, you can subscribe to watch us live on YouTube and, of course, follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for watching.